Going on to the next page, um, we've got a few simple examples that are kind of like that. And uh, things you got to kind of be aware of include, again, this identity is what we call it. The tangent of an angle is the same as the sine of the angle over the cosine of an angle. And that means that this tangent function is going to evaluate to the same thing that this expression evaluates to when you're using the same angle. It's always going to be true. The fact that it's always going to be true, that means that if you ever see something like this in an expression, you can replace with one of these, or vice versa. And we have this really definition for us of cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine, and secant is reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. But that also means that the cotangent of theta is the same as the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. And that's the reciprocal of this, this definition of tangent, which was sine of theta over cosine of theta. This is the reciprocal expression, cosine of theta over sine of theta. Simple enough? Okay. Let's try some stuff. So, um, in the next thing, number one and two, we're not trying to solve for anything here. Um, we're just trying to show that the equations are true by doing some simplif simplification um, of one side or another. So, if we can show somehow that the left side of number one is equal to one, then we'd have the equation one equals one, which would be true. There's no question that one equals one. So let's try it. Um, cotangent of A is, I'm just going to take this um, expression on the left and rewrite it with some changes. Cotangent of A, I can use this uh, definition that I had up here for cotangent, is the same as cosine of A over sine of A. Now, though, you know, up here, the blah. This guy up here, you know, we're talking about thetas as the angle. Whatever the angle is that's shown in this expression, we'll use that angle in our expansion of it. I don't suddenly switch to thetas just because this was in terms of thetas. I'll use whatever, whatever this uses. I just wanted to point that out. Secant of A, I can use the secant equivalent um, which is 1 over cosine. And this sort of gets at one of the things that I like to do, and I'm simplifying trig expressions. If I have something that's a cotangent or a secant or a cosecant, I, I like to convert those into functions or expressions involving sine, cosine, and tangent. So I try to reduce the number of like different functions involved that can only work in sines and cosines and tangents. And tangents can be converted to sines and cosines. So I can only work in sines and cosines, and sometimes really nice things start to happen. Not always, but, but often. Sine of A um, is just sine of A. So I'm going to keep that as, a, as it is. I'll put it over 1 so that I have a series of fractions that are being multiplied together. And now here's where some nice stuff starts to, to, to go on. I have, in this elaborate long fraction, this is really just one fraction, cosine of A, cosine of a times sine of a over sine of a times cosine of a. Well, sine of a times cosine of a and cosine of a times sine of a, those are the same thing. The fact that the order in which they're being multiplied is different is irrelevant. Um, they're they're going to cancel because they are exactly the same. So if I wanted to do this formally, I'd say, well, the sine of a cancels that sine of a, this cosine of a cancels that cosine of a. And when I cancel that stuff out, all I'm left with is 1. And so 1 equals 1. So that shows that the equation is true. Got it. Okay, now I'll go to the second one, number 2. I'm going to work my way over to the right here. Um, so cosecant of A is the reciprocal 1 over sine And the tangent of A is sine over cosine. And now I've got 1 over secant, or I should say in this expression on the left, I have secant of A in the denominator. And that's like saying I've got cosecant of A times tan of A times 1 over secant of A. 
So 1 over secant of a, if I look at what secant means, if I take the reciprocal of secant, that's going to be the reciprocal of 1 over cosine. Reciprocal of 1 over cosine is just cosine. So what that means is that the sec uh, 1 over secant of a is just the same as the cosine of a. So that becomes cosine of a over 1. So I've got these three fractions multiplied together. This is this expression that I've got here is the same as the expression on the left-hand side of this equation. So how'd that work out for us? Um, I've got a sine A canceling a sine of A and a cosine of A canceling a cosine of A. So this equals, again, just one. And again, I've shown that the equation is true by simplifying the left-hand side. I've shown that I get to an obvious point where like one equals one. There's no, no doubt about that. Um, this advice here, try plotting this in a graphing calculator. If this is true, that cotangent of a times secant of a times sine of a is equal to 1, then if you try plotting this function in Desmos, what would you expect to see? Well, since this is equal to 1, it should be essentially saying f of x equals 1. That's like saying y equals 1. It's should give you a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 1. And that's that. Okay. Now, moving down a little further. I should make this bigger. Bigger. Um, Co-function relationships. And this is something I think we've talked about before, but no, no harm in, in going over it again. So if you look at any angle, let's say this one. So you get two angles in this right triangle. Well, three, sorry. We get the right angle and we have these two acute angles. And the thing about these two angles is that they're complements. This, if this is theta, then this is 90 minus theta. If this were theta, then this would be 90 minus theta. And the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So for this angle, the opposite over the hypotenuse would be y over r. y over r. Now that, those two sides, y and r, that ratio, happens to be the ratio that would be the cosine of this angle. So the cosine of 90 minus theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 90 minus theta is y over r. That's the same thing as the sine of theta. Sine of theta is y over r. Cosine of 90 minus theta is y over r. So that means the sine of an angle is equal to the complement Uh, sorry, the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of the complement of that angle. And the opposite is true. The cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of the complement. So that complementary angle relationship is where the co in cosine, cotangent, and cosecant comes from. It refers to those as being complementary functions. They are acting on the complementary angle. So sine of theta equals cosine of the complement, and cosine of theta equals the sine of the complement. And the same thing is going to be true for tangent. Uh, again, if we look at tangent of theta, that's y over x. Now y over x, if you're looking from this angle's perspective, y over x is not the tangent. It's the reciprocal function. That's the cotangent. So tangent of theta, y over x, y over x is the same as the cotangent of 90 minus theta. 90 degrees minus theta. And the opposite holds true as well. Um, for secant and cosecant, that's going to really stretch our brains to think about the Sokotoa relationship there. But the fact that secant and is is a reciprocal of 
cosine and cosecant is reciprocal of sine. We're going to find that the same thing holds true. Um, and we have, again, 90 minus theta and 90 minus theta. Well, what this means is that if you ever see a trig function, one of these six trig functions of 90 minus theta, you can immediately go and replace it with the co-function of just theta. Now, you could do the opposite. You could say, hey, I've got sine of theta. Let me replace it with a cosine of 90 minus theta. Well, generally, if we're trying to simplify an expression, we want to go from things that look like this to things that look like this. So generally, we're going to be going in this direction when we're doing simplification. That's the end of that.